This sure was a fine service. I certainly enjoyed coming here Wednesday evening. Mm -hmm. Tain't everybody can have an evangelist like you to come to the home. What with my feebleness, I don't get to church. Sister Hattie, this is your church. Right here in your parlor. Where two or three are gathered together in my name. There is my church. Why don't you use the wheelchair the children bought for you? That's the last thing I'm going to do. Because after the meeting, the Reverend knows he's going to get some of my homemade candy. <laughs> By the way, Aunt Hattie, isn't this candy making getting too much for you? No, Julie back with me from New Orleans is helping me. You also have Bert. Yes, I have. After his parents died, I raised that boy like he was my own son. I certainly missed him while he was in the army. Now that he's back, you should be happy. Last child, I couldn't be any happier. Especially because he's studying for the ministry. And Julie expects pretty soon she'll take over. You'll find a little lady ever breathe. 
Yes, I got a lot to be thankful for. <laughs> well, good night, Aunt Hattie. Good night, and God bless you. Good night, Reverend. See you next week. Well, please, won't you ever get through cleaning my room? You know you miss the services tonight? I did. I was just trying to have your room sharp. You like things so clean. Julie. I know just what you're going to say, Aunt Hattie. The services were better than ever. And I know what you were going to say. We need a bigger place for our candy kitchen. Child, ever since you got back from New Orleans, you got big ideas. But Aunt Hattie, we're handicapped. We should modernize our little place, increase our business. Why, don't forget we're a candy-making family. Why, down in New Orleans? Yes, 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 I know. But my little candy kitchen's been good enough for me all these years. But there's so many things we could do to make it more comfortable for you. You know, Julie's right, Aunt Hattie. Now, Bert, I'm an old woman. Ain't got much longer to live. You all can have your moderate ideas. Just let me alone with my memories and my religion. I knew you'd come back for those candies. New Orleans chocolate drops with plenty of honey and plenty of pecan. Well, son, uh, how are the studies for the minister come along? I don't see how he gets a chance to study. He's always around here with Julie. Just the same. I'll pass my exams. I suppose, Bert, uh, losing those army habits and routine isn't so easy, huh? Well, the war held a many young man back. Well, I have no regrets. I learned plenty from our chaplain. One thing I'd like to know, were the services in the army the same as we have here at home? Well, now, Aunt Hattie, everything moves fast in war. Well, even our religious services had to be speeded up. But basically, it's still the same. It's still the word of the Lord, only it has been modernized. Why can't we stay with our religion as it is? What Bert means is that uh, old methods have changed. People still think the same, but with more advanced ideas. Isn't that correct, Bert? Yes. People want to advance now, more than ever. And why, religion comes in for its share. My ideas have been good enough for me all these years. You'll never get Aunt Hattie to change. She feels the same about our little place around here. I'm afraid they didn't teach Bert much about religion in the army. Oh, I... I wouldn't say that, Aunt Hattie. I'd say I learned an awful lot. Of course, when you're attached to a chemical warfare unit, you learn more about poisons than religion. Poisons? To kill one another? Is that religion? It's war, Aunt Hattie. Besides, poisons aren't dangerous unless you want them to be. Poisons. New fangled ideas in religion. I've heard enough for one night. I'm off to bed. Lieutenant Raynard, this just came in on the teletype. Wanted, Philip Manley, age 50, approximately six foot two inches, confidence racket. Philip Manley. Involved in check swindle with James Marshall, son of Harlem Candy Manufacturer. Request you watch movements. Manley wanted for questioning and murder. Harry's, Chicago Police Headquarters. Foley, I want you and Tracy to check on a Philip Manley here in Harlem. Never heard of him. I think he may know something about an aggravating thing called an unsolved murder. And I know all about that bad check episode of my sons in Chicago. I made that good. I paid it in full. It's about another matter, Mr. Marshall. A man named Philip Manley. Why annoy Mr. Marshall with these matters? He's only concerned with his son. And is your son still connected with this Manley? No, he is not. It's merely a routine checkup. I'm not interested in Manley or anyone else. And now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, Okay, Mr. Marshall. And now, Alice, my orders to you are that my son is to draw no more money. Don't you think you ought to talk to him? I'm through talking to him. That's all I've done since he returned from Chicago. 
Perhaps you should have let him stay there. And find myself in more trouble. I sent him to Chicago to study chemistry at your suggestion. And I thought it was a good idea. A working knowledge of a laboratory is essential to good candy making. But he refuses to work. Any more trouble than I wash my hands of him. That's being rather harsh. Well, maybe. But my mind's made up. Oh, Alice, dear. If it hadn't been for you, my life since my wife's death would have been very lonely, very empty. I'm going to take good care of you in my will, just as I promised. Anything of this business? Oh, we can. And we will. Someday, Aunt Hattie will see things our way. Just don't worry yourself so much. We'd better go to a bird. Sit down, children. I want to talk to you. There's something I want you to know. Last night, I had a premonition. Premonition of death. Don't be frightened. Don't be upset. I'm ready. Because I've always tried to walk in the ways of our Lord. But, Aunt Hattie, how can you say such a thing? And I've decided when I leave this world, I want all my friends around me. Well, I don't understand. Well, I'm having my coffin brought here. A coffin? Here? There ain't nothing to worry about, children. It's beautiful. Kicked it out myself. This is nonsense, Aunt Hattie. You can't go through with it. Why, you're just inviting tragedy. Please, Aunt Hattie. We're not put on this earth for useless demonstrations of sadness. Clear thinking. Knowing what's right and what's wrong. To do good unto others, that's what he wants us to do. I know that, Bert. The trouble is that people are too much concerned with this world and not the other. Bringing a coffin here to rehearse your funeral is not the way he wants it. Oh, he wants you to live, to... Stay on this world to spread his word. That may be, but the world is passing me. So I look to him and his kingdom. This is the way I've always wanted it. All right, Aunt Hattie. It's late now and you should be in bed. Yes, I am tired. Good night, Aunt Hattie. Good night. Good night, Julie. Child, will you sing me my favorite spiritual? Oh, sure, Aunt Hattie. Look down. Look down. That lonesome road before you travel alone. Look up, look up. Uh...
that lonesome road before you travel with Miss Adams and Mr. Wilkinson. Conference. Don't you get tired of using that word? Well, I guess I never... How about a little conference with me tonight, baby? Oh, I've got a date with someone else, but I think I can arrange I'll it. I'll pick up your answer on the way out. She turned your proposition down. Preposterous! A girl with a small candy kitchen competing with the martial chain? What's the matter, Father? Letting a little chocolate drop send your blood pressure up? The girl has a good product. I'll say she has. Cute eyes, cute nose, cute lips. You keep out of this. We're speaking of candy. Oh, she's candy, all right. Only sweeter. How do you know so much about her? Oh, she's a knockout. Talk of the neighborhood. I got a peek at her while I was drifting around. That's all you do is drift around. But don't think you're going to get away with anything around here like you did in Chicago. Going to Chicago was Miss Adams' idea. It wasn't her idea for you to cost me a lot of money and disgrace me out there. I didn't want to come back. The police wanted you out of Chicago. Miss Adams has arranged for living quarters for you at the Towers Hotel. What? Am I being put out? I can't stand your recklessness any longer. I don't want you in my house. You killed your mother with your wild escapades. You didn't do too much to make her happy. Why, you ungrateful... Now, you go to work, or you don't get a penny from me. Okay, I'll go to work. I'll make that little candy store girl a proposition. Build a business up so she can better compete with you. Yes, you would. But where will you get the money? From you, father. Sure, from you. Why did you follow me here from Chicago? A little matter of money. Those other checks that your father knew nothing about. Don't tell him. He cut me off entirely. I'll get you some money. Come with me. But your son has a good idea. Modernizing the girl's business. Ridiculous. Why, we'd be financing our own competition. She's got something to sell that we need. Offer to fix up her little store. Cut her in on the profits. Yes, that's it. Make the proposition glowing. Then put the squeeze on her. But she'll be suspicious when she learns that it's you. Well, my son has given me an idea. And I furthermore agreed to provide up-to-date equipment to defray all expenses to furnish extra help if needed. Uh, extra help, that's... Well, the doctor say we need it for my bad feet. In return, for which I am to receive 60% and you 40% of the business. 60 and 40, that ain't but 95 cents in money, isn't uh, it? Uh, Swifty, stay out of this. We're discussing a business deal. It sounds awfully good, Aunt Hattie. It'll help us get our chance. Well, what do you think about it, Reverend? Well, it's Julie's ambition. She wants to get ahead. New idea, new equipment. New, new pair of feet. All right, as long as it doesn't interfere with Aunt Hattie. Oh, that's thoroughly understood. Aunt Hattie will not be disturbed. Well, honey child, if it's what you want, I guess it'll be all right. Uh, extra help in that plane. Uh, uh, <laughs> Well, that stops some worries. We've got the candy kitchen. Sometimes I feel... You 
double-crossed me. It was my idea. Your idea? Yes. But my way of doing business. I'm going to let you manage the place. I will not. One good idea doesn't make you as clever as you think you are. You'll do exactly as I say. You manage the place. Let one of your stooges do that. Monday, you report there. That's what you think. Now get out. But he's such a dandy Got eyes that shine And teeth like a pearl And the way he loves me, Lord It's out this world On a thing that's wrong He's got feet that hurt And somehow you know He don't like work Oh, he's sweet, sweet, sweet like chocolate candy, I love that man. He's just dandy. Business has been great, gone way up. And so is my interest in you, sugar. All the sugar around here goes into our chocolate drop. I don't know what makes you tick, baby, but you sure got what it takes. You know, it makes me feel good working alongside of you. You're working alongside me was Mr. Wilkinson's idea. And what's your idea about it, honey? My idea is to run this place strictly on a business basis. A pretty girl like you shouldn't be spoiling her lovely hands, working so hard in the kitchen. I don't mind. This little place is very important to us. I like working hard, even if I am a woman. And a very beautiful one, too. wants to speak to you in the front parlor. Jim. Be right with you, man. Paper you pulled in Chicago. I almost went to jail because of that. They can still pin that murder rap on you. Oh, no. They've got nothing on me about that murder, and they know it. No one must see you here. Wait in the other room. Come, Jim, it's urgent. You're in serious trouble, and I know it. How did you know? It was I who sent you to Manly. Is that enough? I'm going to have a hard time getting your father to make good for you again, but I'll try. Jim, have you forgotten about us? Oh, why talk about that, Alice? We had a lot of fun together. We were good friends. We still are. You should have known the score. That's right, Jim. But it's gotten the best of me. I can't live without you. You mean so much to me. Oh, Jim, I love you. I love you so dearly. Oh, please, Alice, you're being silly. You know, it was never that serious with me. It could never be. But think of all I've done for you, Jim. Getting you money. Sent you to Chicago. I've always protected you with your father. Do you know, your father threatens to cut you off in his will entirely and leave everything to me. And as for me, I'd hope that we'd be married. My father cut me off. Ridiculous. And as for marriage, you know you're too... Too old for you, Jim? Yeah, too old. So that's 
that's it. You and Alan. So what, the old fool? You heard what she said. The old man will sign everything over to her unless you stop it. And how can I stop it? You know something about poison, don't you? Yeah. I learned all about it from you. Good night, girls. See you in the morning. It's been a long day. We ought to step out tonight. How about hitting some of the hot spots, baby? I know all the best ones. Mr. Marshall, I've told you time and again our association is strictly business. Let's keep it that way. I suppose if uh, Bert asked you, it would be okay. If I hear any more of this talk, you'll be through here. <laughs> well, that's funny. Fire me when my old man owns this place? Yeah, Albert Marshall. Head of the Marshall chain stores. Your father owns this place? That's not true. That's what you think, baby. I can take over any time, but I won't. If you could sort of make me change my mind. Please, let go! Go, Julie! Please, for my sake, something has happened. I'll tell you about it later. May I speak with you alone, Miss Weston? Julie, why don't you have to leave? Go to a bird. I'll be there as soon as I talk to Mr. Wilkinson. Tell her everything is all right. I'm afraid everything isn't all right, Miss Weston. I have instructions to close you out and take over. But why? Mr. Marshall's orders. He has control here. Then Jim was right. His father does own the place. Why did you fool me? Oh, I only took orders. It meant my job. All right. You can take the place, but you can't take our recipe. Oh, I'm afraid you signed that over, too. So that's it. After all the struggles and heartache. I'm sorry. There's no need for you to be sorry. Mr. Marshall is the one who'll be sorry. Yes, he'll never get away with this. He's the one who's gonna be sorry. <laughs> And he keeps us so upset working alongside him in the kitchen. He, he, he annoys her all the time. It... What is it, child? You're trembling. You'll have to get rid of this fellow, Jim Marshall. We won't be bothered with him anymore. We've lost the place. We what? What do you mean, child? It was all a trick, Aunt Hattie. We've been swindled. <laughs> nice work, Wilkinson. You did a fine job. And this disposes of our number one competition. Thank you, sir. Pardon me, sir. I, uh... I... Yes, yes. Out with it, man. Speak up. Speak up. Well, I'd like to ask you about the special bonus you promised me, sir, if I put this deal over. And I did. Special bonus? I haven't time for small talk, Wilkinson. You're a weak sister. And it's my pity for you that's kept you here so long. You get your salary. If you're not satisfied, turn your resignation over to Miss Adams. Resignation? But, sir, it's only asking... You for... heard what I said. I'll be at my attorney's office for a couple of hours. I'll have something important to tell you. Wait for me. I only asked for what was promised me, and he talks about my resignation. After all the years I've put into this business. Yes, you've been with us a long time, Mr. Wilkinson. But not long enough to give him a taste of what I've learned. I'll fix him. I wouldn't threaten if I were you. I'll show him I'm no weak sister. Oh, would y'all bring that... Big box in there, bro. We ain't got no candy to fit no box that big. This is uh, not for candies. Well, uh, every customer's got to have something that was for candy. Uh, this happens to be a coffin. Coffin? Ain't nobody dead in here, is it? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I know I feel all, all right. 
That's my heart. My heart don't run up there. My and head. But this one, your cat coughing all out of here. I'm sorry to keep you so late, Alice, but I wanted you to hear the good news. I've just come from my attorney. I've left you everything in my will. You are my sole beneficiary. That's... Oh, it's wonderful of you, Albert. Everything I've done for you was what I felt like doing. But what about Jim? You can't just cut him off like that. He is your only son, you know. You'll have lawyers to contend with. Can he break that sort of will? Ah, my dear, I've taken care of that. I left him the great sum of one dollar. I'd like to see his face when the will is read. <laughs> so would I. And what is this? Wilkinson brought this. This is your latest conquest in confections. He thought you might like to taste the spoils of battle. Mm -hmm. That's right. To the victor belong the spoils. <laughs> Hmm. Not bad. This chocolate has a nice, rich flavor. Yes, that's very... Uh, very... Very... What is it, examiner? Calls for an autopsy. The order of bitter almonds. Death was instantaneous. We'll make a complete laboratory checkup. I'll take this box with me. This looks like it might become a very interesting case. Stand by, Mailey. Jackson, you're not going through with this. Please. But it's Aunt Hattie's wish, my son. It's her fondest wish. We can't deny her that. Well, it, it's wrong, I tell you. It, it's... I know, Bert. I'm against it. But she wants to see how her friends will act when a real judgment day comes. You know yourself that her idea is completely uncalled for. It's... Wait. I've got to go through with it, Bert. For her sake. For her sake. May the good Lord, who is about to receive the soul of Sister Hattie Weston, in his mercy, Take her unto his bosom and comfort her. Amen. Amen. That she may know that her friends on this earth walk in the true path of righteousness. Amen. That she may have the consolation of knowing the mourning of her true friends. Amen. That her every wish be fulfilled by those dear ones she wanted near her. Sister Hattie, that your soul may rest in peace is the wish of us, your dear friends, who mourn you and carry you to your final resting place. Amen.
Weston live here? Yes, yes. Homicide squad. <laughs> You, Julie Weston? Yes. You're under arrest, Miss Weston. Under arrest? For what, officer? Suspicion of murder. Albert Marshall was poisoned by candies made in this house. No! 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 Uh, would you get the smelling salts it's in the medicine chest? I must warn all of you that anything you say will be used against you. Now, Miss Adams, you had no reason to suspect that the candies were poisoned? No. Mr. Wilkinson brought the box to the office, and I saw nothing unusual in that. Well, I brought them at Mr. Marshall's orders. I'd gotten the candy from Miss Weston. Well, it was an unpleasant situation, Lieutenant. I had to notify her that Mr. Marshall was taking over. He owned most of the stock and decided to combine her place with his nearest store. Was Miss Weston aware of all this? Oh, no, sir. She understood that she was doing business with me. The plan was shrewd and not very ethical, but not illegal. The girl was highly agitated, felt like she'd been tricked out of a little store. She, uh, well, she said that Mr. Marshall would never get away with it. I brought the package to the office, and that's all I know. That's right, Lieutenant. I overheard her threaten my father. I was leaving by the rear door when the commotion started. What have you to say to that, Miss Weston? He's lying. He'd been trying to make advances and couldn't get anywhere. And this is his way of getting even. That's not true. She's trying to cover up. Quiet. Go on, Miss. What Mr. Wilkinson said is true. I was very bitter. Mr. Marsh's son had threatened me, said he'd have his father close the place if I didn't go out with him. And then Mr. Wilkinson came in, said I was through. I guess I did say I'd get even. But I didn't kill him! We'll find out about that soon enough. In the meantime, I'm paroling you in the custody of Reverend Jackson, who I've known for many years. As for the rest of you, any one of you could have had a motive. We'll find out about that, too. That's all for now. Patience and fortitude, patience and fortitude, patience and fortitude, and things will come your way. When you have solitude, life can't be dull and rude, but patience and fortitude, and things will come your way. River wears away the rock with patience for after all, Russell you can't throw this kind of a party on peanuts. Oh, no. But Jim can, on sugar. And believe me, honey, that's what he has plenty of since he lost his old man. Go with patience, fortitude. Patience and fortitude. Patience and fortitude. Patience and fortitude. And things will come your way. And things will come your way. Norma, you're terrific. I got a great spot for you in a new musical I'm getting ready to do. Oh, really, Jim? I'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> bow, wow, 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 wow. Oh, Remy Mac Booty with the Vance. <laughs> Girls, I'm having my newest confection board up here. New Orleans chocolate drops. A box for each of you. Personally autographed by me. The little dog laughed to see such sport and the dish ran away with the spoon. Watch out, he come trucking around the corner, watch out. He come trucking around the corner, watch out. He come trucking around the corner, watch out. Get out, look out, stay out. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses lost the king's fence. Get Humpty Dumpty back again. Watch out. He come truck around the corner. Watch out. He come truck around the corner. Watch out. He come truck around the corner. Watch out. Get out. Look out. Stay out. Jim, a lot of fellows would give anything to take your place. Yeah, take me for my money, too. But one guy in particular. 
I'm too wise for him, baby. Come on, drink up. Little Jack Horner sat in his corner was eating his Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and he pulled out a plum. He said, what a good boy am I. Watch out. He come truck around the corner, watch out. He come truck around the corner, watch out. He come truck around the corner, watch out. Look out, stay out, get out. Martha, here's a candy you want to throw it down. Okay, Swifty, put it in the other room. Hey, little diddle the cat and the fiddle in the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed and sleeped his foot and the dish ran away the spoon. Then Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses, all the king's men couldn't get Humpty Dumpty back again. Then little Jay Horn on the set and the corner was eating this Christmas pie. He put in the sum and he pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I. And Mary had a little lamb, his fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, I said the lamb was sure to go. They had a head like a rabbit, shake fly behind and eat everything to find lying on the ground. Come on, boys, and tell me how I sound because it's going through town and I'm trucking on down. Watch out. They come truck around the corner, watch out. They come truck around the corner, watch out. They come truck around the corner, watch out. Get out, look out, stay out. Baby, you're really going to hear something. Savannah Churchill, she's great. I want to be loved But by only you I shouldn't be so crazy about you But what can I do? But they don't ever downstairs not to let him up but blackmailing me for years his party is over baby my dream ours is just beginning but they don't ever Chicago, he followed me here, getting more dough from my old man. But now the money's mine, baby. He won't get another cent. Who is this fella, Jim? Do I know him? Nah, his name's Manly. But after I get through with him, baby, it'll be mud. Jim, you'd better be careful. He sounds dangerous. <laughs> the police know all about him, money, And I'll put the finishing touch. We found this in the cabinet. Pretty dangerous stuff to have around a candy kitchen. 
Looks like she's guilty, Lieutenant. Shall we pick her up? Hmm. Okay, pick her up. And also pick up Marshall's son. I've checked on him in Chicago, and he might know something about this poison. The same thing I always want, money. You can't blackmail me anymore. My father's dead. You're not getting another penny. That poison in the candies. Suppose I were to tell my suspicions to the police. You couldn't prove that ah, I... Ah, but I could tell them that you studied chemistry. That you know all about poison. With your record, they wouldn't believe you. Remember that bottle of poison you spoke about when you were... Uh, so desperate? I didn't do it. It's enough to pin a murder rap on you. Well, at this hour of the night, surely not for business. Perhaps this is a romantic call. I have as much right to be here at this hour as you have. And what are you doing here at this hour? I'm here straightening out these books. They're very important to me now, you know. Well, not for long. Now that Father's dead, I'm taking over. I want the keys to that candy shop. Why, certainly. You may take them, but you can't take over the place. And who's to stop me? Me. Perhaps you should know. Your father signed over everything in his will to me. I don't believe it. No? I'm in control now, Jim, and I have the money. You wanted youth? Now go see how you can get that youth without money, without me to help you. keys to this place. We own it, you know. But you have no right to come here this hour. I, uh, I forgot something. You needn't look any further. The police were here to get it. How did you know what it was? You must have used it. How did you know what I was talking about? You did it. You killed your father. No, I, but I would have. Now, honey, you and I have some important business. No, no. I'll call the police. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Come here. Let me hold you in my arms.
Well, there's no doubt about it this time, Miss Weston. Too bad we were late. We figured he'd come here to make sure you wouldn't talk about that bottle we found. You've got a pretty scream. You better have a story just as pretty. Get dressed. We're bringing you in. My poor child. But can't you recall anything else? That's all I know, Reverend. Somebody else grabbed the knife. To protect me, I think. It's all so bewildering. First, someone poisoned. By whom? Besides, poisons aren't dangerous unless you want them to be. Poisons aren't dangerous unless you want them to be. Bert! Oh, Reverend, surely you don't see he... Courage, my <laughs> child. Courage. <laughs> Where did you come from originally? From New Orleans. I told you my parents died, my aunt had erased me. Must you keep asking me the same questions over and over again? You told Sergeant Foley that you were asleep when Marshall entered. Then how did you know he was there? I heard the noise from the kitchen and that woke me. How could he have gotten in without you knowing it? He had a key to the shop. His father had taken over the place and was separated from our apartment. Why didn't you call the police? I could. He grabbed and held me. You didn't phone the police because you didn't want him there to see what would happen. No, no, that's not true. I swear it. Did you at any time ask Jim Marshall to save your store from his father? No. Would your place have passed into Jim's hands? I don't know. Was there anything between you and Jim Marshall? No, there's only one boy in my life. And you didn't want him to know about you and Jim Marshall. So you killed Marshall. Okay, boys. Put in the lineup. Let the boys look her over. I'll get it started. I'll be with you after the morning lineup. Attention, men. Clements. George Clements, put on your head, Clements. Look straight out in front. Suspected hijacker on Jersey Highway. Step back against the wall, Clements. Suspected of Harlem loft lootings. Step along, Clements. May Carlson. Step lively, May. May Carlson, shoplifter. Fourth time picked up, no convictions, known to consort with criminals. Walk back and forth, May. Turn around, May. Walk back. That's all. Step down, May. Julie Weston. Step lively, Julie. Julie Weston. Face out front, Julie. And stand up straight. Suspected of the murder of Jim Marshall in Harlem may be wanted by police of New Orleans. She's innocent, my little girl. I heard men's voices that night in the kitchen. She didn't do it. <laughs> pray, you pray. Maybe your way of religion is better. Easy, Aunt Hattie. <laughs> yes, I will, Aunt Hattie. The Lord in his wisdom will find a way. Amen to that. Then maybe you've got an alibi. If you're innocent, why don't you prove it? Where did you learn to handle a knife? Why did you kill Marshall? Why did you kill his son? Who is this boy you care for? He couldn't have done it. He's too fine, I know. You know because you did it yourself. So someone else did it. Who did? If you know it was someone else, then you must know who it is. You killed the father for revenge. You killed the son to stop him from telling your boyfriend. Maybe the boyfriend killed him. No, don't accuse him. You're protecting this boy. Then he did it. No. I'll let you accuse him. Oh, Bert. What has happened? What dreadful thing? 
thing have I done to bring this on? The ways of the Lord are mysterious. Faith in Him is our only hope. But there's nothing left. We've lost everything. I've heard Aunt Hattie. All because I want to expand our little candy kitchen. But there is something left, Julie, dear. My love for you. Yours for me. Did you say nothing? Darling, we've got everything. Yeah, I I've been waiting for you, Swifty. Yeah. Ooh, you see, I had to sneak through the back because they in the parlor while the door was closed. Well, how come you out of bed? I got to get well, for Julie's sake. Yeah. The Reverend and Bert wouldn't allow this, but it's got to be done. Um, yeah. Come here. Ma. Can you keep a secret without running all over the neighborhood and telling it? That is my fear now. I can't even walk all over the neighborhood. Well, we pray to the Lord for help. Yeah. Now we got to do a little helping ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Now see this note? Yeah. I want you to take it and give it to Captain Renard at police headquarters. And nobody, nobody, mind you, is to know he ever got it. Not even me? Not even you, after you deliver it. And I have to shut my eyes when I give it to him. Right, get going, get going! <laughs> That's the place I'm looking for. The headquarters man. Uh, what do you want? Uh, uh, you see, I was, uh, well, I ain't supposed to know what I want. I... Sit down. Yeah, excuse me. Excuse me. I, I put my head wrong. I, I was supposed to. What are you nervous about? I ain't exactly nervous. I just generally falls to pieces around polices. And it's much more worse than nervous. Captain, your honor. Lieutenant and not your honor. Lieutenant, not your honor. Well, the law generally is. I usually ain't. What do you want here? Uh, you see, I uh, wait for Miss Weston. Little woman and had his candy. Candy kitchen. Where were you on the night of the murder? Oh, I was off that night. I was, that was my night nice ball, and I was juicing in the saloon. Are you sure you weren't in that candy kitchen? Because when I go to get high, uh, you can't get nowhere around no candy. And when you juicing that, you ain't got time for no other pieces. What do you know about handling a knife? Well, I know lots about knife. I ain't gonna tell you. No, I know I can eat my mashed potatoes without a knife. Uh, Stop this fooling. I ain't fooling, Mr. Because I have to have a fork for everything I eat. Cause if I can't fork it, I, I can't... Uh, just don't bother with it myself. What kind of work do you do in the candy kitchen? I do feet work. I use my feet. Yes. Use your head and answer me sensibly. Yes, that was Aunt Harry sent me here to uh, bring you something. You see, she says uh, uh, you ain't supposed to go around the neighborhood with it. I ain't supposed to know it. And, and uh, what are you so nervous about? I, I ain't exactly nervous. I just get mixed up. Oh yes, and. Uh, you take it while I am looking, then I ain't seen that it was brought, and you ain't heard it after you know it. Nothing in there to, uh... You can go now. I ain't arrested. Now, run along. Uh, you mean limp along with my feet. Are... But you visiting there, too? What are you doing here? Just half of something I'm supposed to forget. Something you want me to tell I had it. No, you just run along, Swifty. This is Bert Harlem, Julie Weston's sweetheart. Have a seat. Thank you, sir. I uh, came to tell you what I know of the case, although I'm not sure it will have any bearing. I like that pin you're wearing. <laughs> Distinguished service medal, sir. I was with the 110th Battalion attached to a chemical warfare unit. I see. Now, what do you have to tell me? Well, several times a man came to see Jim Marshall. Once in particular, Jim seemed extremely upset. Do you know this man? No, but I heard his name. It was Manley. Boys, we've got places to go. There's something I want Manley to hear. We'll get the old grapevine going. <laughs>
whoever you are, I'm going to break your rotten bone. Vengeance is the Lord. Be sure thy sin shall find thee out. Repent and flee the wrath of God. Thy brother's blood is upon thee. Screw, you are haunting me. Your spirit is condemning me. Death is upon thee. I'm condemning you of murder. Yes, I am a murderer, all right. Yes, I killed Jim Marshall, and I'll kill you too, you idiot. <laughs> All right, boys, take him in. Book him for the murder of Jim Marshall. You're doing a good job, that time, didn't we? We sure did, Swifty. I didn't want to give this to you until the owner came to claim it. That's right. You're a very brave woman. I wonder if this pen will write six feet underground. I'm entitled to my share. The old man can't take it away from me now, and neither can his worthless son. You saw to it that they would both be out of the way. That's a lie. I didn't kill either one of them. You poisoned those candies and then killed Jim Marshall to get him out of the way. Why do you accuse me? Because you threatened Mr. Marshall. You felt that he had treated you wrongly. What if I did threaten him? What if I killed him? He deserved that and more. That's a very pretty story. Shall I place this man under arrest, Miss Adams? I dislike being the means of having him... Arrested? Why not? Mr. Marshall was nice to you. You want to see justice done, don't you? But I didn't do it. What makes you assume that this man is guilty? He's a laboratory man. He'd know about chemicals. How a tiny capsule of poison could be inserted in a chocolate drop. I see. Tracy, bring Manley in. That man knows more about poisons than I do. And according to his confession, more about handling a knife. He killed Jim Marshall, not because the boy couldn't pay, but because of jealousy. Chicago headquarters advised me of a certain affair between two people in this room. That double-crosser. She double-crossed me for Jim Marshall. Manley figured that Miss Adams getting all of Marshall's estate, he tried to win her back. That was Mr. Marshall's idea, not mine, leaving me all of his money. But you arranged to have young Jim go to Chicago, have Manley mix him up in trouble to show Mr. Marshall that his son was worthless. That's right. She framed the whole thing. But she didn't plan you losing your fountain pen. Those initials on that pen brand you the murderer. You knew all about poison from Manley and had no trouble in fixing those candies after Wilkerson had left them at the office. Are you accusing me? You did that yourself, Miss Adams. Just a short while ago, you mentioned the poison capsule. No one but the police and the killer knew how that candy was poisoned. All right. I did it. I killed Mr. Marshall just as you said. I loved his son, Jim. No price was too great to pay. I wanted him. Money was the only way I could get him. Now, he's gone. Everything's gone. Ironic, Miss Adams. The same poison that sent Albert Marshall to his death will send you to the electric chair. Did you children see the glow of happiness that came over Anne had his face and we told her Julie was free and the candy kissing hers again? Yes, we did. But poor Aunt had had an awful time of it. I hope it wasn't too much for her. She looked so tired. Well, you both had a time of it. It's something we've all got to forget. If only Anne Hattie can forget her premonition. Premonition? Premonition of death? Oh, no. I've seen the Lord's answer to our prayers, and I want to live. 
live to serve him as long as I can. If the Lord be praised, it's a miracle. And Hattie walking again. Here, Aunt Hattie, let me help you sit down. Please. No, no. I'm going to get well. You were right. Say, Swifty. Ma'am. Get rid of that coffin. Thank you, I had. I get rid of it directly. <laughs> it's so wonderful, Aunt Hattie. You're getting well. I'm so happy. I'm going to stay that way, too, honey. And remember, young man, you might have saved my life, but I ain't above giving you a spanking like I did when I was raising you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it to you right now. Unless you marry Julie before any more harm comes to her. And that's an order. Aunt Hattie. Orders are orders. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how did you get out of one trouble and then get right back into another? Well, some troubles are unnecessary, Sister, but some are worthwhile getting into.